Well, I can't just not make a dedicated video with all my opinions on Space Age. I mean, they announced it before I even started making videos, so I've basically been preparing to make a video on it for nearly three years. Also, I'm putting zero effort into this, so you'll need to accept that my voice is more monotone than usual. I'll start off and say that Space Age was great, and it delivers the level of polish that you would expect from an official Factorio expansion. The wait would have been worth it for all the quality of life improvements alone. Sometimes I need to remember like, oh yeah, you used to not be able to do this, because now I can't imagine living without it. I'm not even sure where to start. I guess I'll talk about why I think the whole thing works. It's got good progression and evolution, and the way they start you out making space science is a good way to introduce you to the concept of space platforms. It's a lot more straightforward than it was at the land, so it's nice to see them incorporating a lot of the feedback. Some people complained about how the start is just vanilla Factorio, but it's an expansion pack, not an overhaul mod. Anyway, getting that first platform going and landing on a planet is a magical experience, and it's really nice that they made it so that even if you get stranded with nothing, you can still set up a base from scratch. Every planet requires its own unique approach, and each one feels special. I think the way that you can either build on the planet or leverage the strength of your other planets is a good way to make it feel less overwhelming for players who might struggle to wrap their heads around certain planets. Obviously, some Factorio veterans would scoff at that, but while Space Age is difficult, I don't think it's out of the reach for anyone capable of beating the base game, and that takes a lot of skill from a developer's point of view. The interplanetary logistics is definitely the most interesting part of the expansion, and I think it's reasonably balanced. It's obviously a bit of a messy affair, requiring lots of specific weight limits based on some arbitrary number chosen by the developers for every single item, but it never felt unnecessarily restrictive or imbalanced. That being said, if you could only ship 50 bottles of science at a time, I'd just be like, alright, time to build some more rockets, whereas most players would faint. So it's fundamentally difficult to pick a number that would feel right for everyone. Shipping things like ammo was nerfed a bit, and some people might complain about the developers forcing you into certain playstyles, but it's a reasonable trade-off to make skipping building proper infrastructure in space require more infrastructure on the ground. I'll take this chance to segue into the fact that Vulcanus was my favorite planet, not only because of all the free metal, but because it's the only one that felt suited to building larger bases. Some people didn't like how small my Fulgor and Gleba bases were, and that's simply because they didn't need to be any bigger. But for something like Vulcanus, if I wanted to use green belts everywhere, I had to make several rockets capable of shipping them into orbit. And that's an example of when I thought that the rocket capacity limits were effectively guiding me towards more interesting playstyles, because suddenly I've got a reason to set up lots of infrastructure. Players who put in the effort are rewarded with infinite green belts, and those who chose not to can live with blue belts. The consequence of being balanced for the average player results in Space Age occupying the state between Vanilla Factorio and an Overhaul mod. So if you're accustomed to C-block levels of torture, the actual level of industry you need to make on each planet feels laughably insignificant. It's something you don't really think about when playing Vanilla Factorio, because when you can beat it in 4-8 hours, the small scale to win doesn't actually feel that unusual. But when you need to go through the ceremony of landing on an untouched planet and end up leaving with only a tiny corner of it actually conquered, it doesn't feel quite right. So I think I'll be happy to play it again with a much higher difficulty. It's one thing to build something extravagant for the sake of aesthetics, but my small Fulgor and Gleba bases didn't feel like they hindered me at all. I was still able to research at least 100,000 bottles of agricultural science so that I could two-tap big asteroids, and I'm not gonna build something wholly unnecessary. Especially with how powerful the new buildings are, you need to build less and less, and then when you throw quality into the mix, you can get away with next to nothing. My mega base had thousands of furnaces, but a single legendary foundry surrounded by legendary beacons could replace nearly a thousand furnaces each. It's something for the mega basers, but for someone like me who generally considers the game over once they've won, it results in even smaller builds. Considering the actual amount of science need to win, it's more balanced to the 1.0 rates, despite having your SPM more than doubled the moment you get biolabs. It's probably appropriately balanced for the average player considering the increased complexity of all the extraterrestrial sciences, so this isn't really a criticism, but more of an observation and a sentiment I've seen from other skilled players after their first run. I didn't mess around with quality too much, and I could turn it off and not really notice. The only thing I'd miss would be the uncommon power poles and asteroid collectors, but for everything else, I'd just scale up. It's another thing that feels like it's mainly for the mega basers, and once again, I respect it, it's just not really my playstyle. I feel like Kovrex has given them enough to chew on for years. It's also a bit of a boon for players who don't want to actually put in the effort to redesign a build, because why do that when you can just grind out a few rare assemblers and increase your throughput by 60%. It's especially powerful on space platforms, and probably why it was implemented. I'm not entirely sold on the names, and people brought it up to Kovrax the land, but he wasn't particularly impressed with any of the suggestions. Personally, I like to think of them as Dwarf Fortress qualities like Fine, Superior, Exceptional, and Masterwork. Maybe I'll use that customizable Quality Nave mod. Fundamentally, Kovrax just finds the idea of a legendary fish amusing, and that informs all of his other tastes. 
you can tell that the developers really want your designs to be more freeform and tailored to the specific run, not only because of the rail changes, but especially with something like Vulcanus or Fulgora. It's a sentiment that I generally agree with. I can only imagine that as developers you'll get tired of seeing the same blueprinted city block for the hundred thousandth time. Some people might complain, but as someone who specifically avoids blueprints between games so that their bases are more interesting, I'm inclined to agree. It would be annoying when you're trying to build hyper-optimized mega bases, but that's why they added foundation to the end game. And that's the mindset that sets Factorio apart, I think. It lets you have this unique challenge without compromising how people will want to approach the game later. It's difficult for me to pick apart the actual crafting paths of something like Vulcanus and feel like I had something worth pointing out beyond its Factorio, but every single planet managed to have its own system that had its own unique twist. I really liked the concept of crafting backwards on Fulgora, and while I didn't exactly do it, I liked the idea of farming to make all your supplies on Gleba. Aquilo doesn't really apply since you can't make the base supplies, but it's my second favorite planet because of the way that it instead turns the way your designs need to look on its head rather than the ingredients. The nerf to robots feels like it's good compromise to encourage you to build your builds while not making it impossible, rewarding those who are sufficiently determined. Some people have pointed out that a lot of the things I've said in my criticisms of space exploration were realized in Space Age, but it's not like I'm gonna take any credit for this because Kovrex didn't even know who I was. It's most likely a case of convergent evolution, but it does make me feel like my opinions were more valid seeing them work here. Arendelle joined my team on the last day, but that was just because we were on Aquilo, and I don't think he actually recognized my in-game name. He wasn't in person at the event, so never shall us meet. My criticism's going to be fundamentally from the point of view as a Factorio veteran, and so it's difficult to say what would legitimately improve the experience for everyone or just me specifically. One thing I would have liked to see more of would have been mass interplanetary logistics. Everything you need on other planets is in such small amounts that you'll hardly need more than one old Spaven ship doing rounds. My Aquila ship could carry enough to make like 50,000 Prometheum science worth of quantum processors in one trip, so they're primarily for ferrying science around. Even the Calcite probably would have been fine hitching along with a science vessel. Whether they didn't want to do this because of performance issues with having tons of ships would be one thing, and whether that would be good in the base game is another, but I'd like to see mods tackle it more. I mentioned in the main video that the space platforms were the best part of the expansion, and I still stand by that. It's this fundamental shift in gameplay mechanics that really brings them into their own. The defense requirements are cool, and the way that you gather resources is as well. But most of all, it's because the multifaceted approaches to the designs, where you can optimize for speed or production. However, I personally disagree with some of the approaches there. I mentioned in the video that it encourages building very compact builds, and that's only half true. While it does decrease your mass, it hardly affects your actual speed. As far as I can tell, the main component in limiting your speed isn't your mass, but your width, which doesn't make much sense, but that's why this thing with dozens of thrusters isn't flying that much faster than my game-winning ship. It doesn't feel very intuitive, especially when it puts a hard speed limit on your platforms. I don't think that width is inherently imbalanced because it increases your needs for defense, and I don't think that speed is inherently imbalanced because it means that you need stronger defenses. It seems to me that you'd naturally find a balance between the size of the ship and how quickly you consume ammo to defend it, so finding that balance would be the interesting challenge, so it feels a little weird when it's capped like this. Who knows, I wasn't in the room when they settled on whatever formula it uses. Maybe it's not based off of purely mass and thrust for some reason I hadn't considered. It just feels like width slowing you down so massively is strange because it's not like there's drag in space, and mass hardly affecting it feels even more backwards. If huge shipments of items between plants were normalized, you'd probably want to make each additional storage unit add tons of mass to the ship to balance out speed and cargo size, but in space age they're basically free. Also, it still feels a little silly that the planets are only 15,000 kilometers away. I guess what I'm saying is, is that I wish the ship's design mingled with the other mechanics more. Once again, it's difficult to draw the line of what would have been nice as a mod or what would be nice overall, but I'd definitely like to see larger distances and more intentional design differences between cargo platforms and transportation platforms. I don't think it's unreasonable to sit back and say, I'd love to see this idea explored in an overhaul mod, because that's basically how it played Vanilla Factorial before Space Age came out. I don't want to contradict myself in my space exploration retrospective where I said that I didn't want the meta to be massive shipments between planets and instead focus on isolated factories. I definitely love how Space Age handles it for the most part, but I dream of a world where massive space tankers coexist between massive ground factories. Then again, maybe I'm just salty that my hyper-compressed spaghetti designs lose out to space bricks that are 50% empty platform. I'll also touch on the Shattered Planet. It didn't exist at the LAN, and it used to be called Deep Space or something, so clearly it was a last-minute addition. But I am a little disappointed that you can't land on what's left of it. Even if it's just chunks of red and empty space, it would be hilarious to see people try to make a base there, and I feel like it would be the perfect endgame challenge just to say that you did, requiring gigabase levels of damage research. 
As it is now, there's so much asteroid density that your computer dies from rendering all the asteroids before it does the asteroids themselves. Some people have reached it, and the meta is basically only railguns and explosive rockets for maximum AoE. Or just turning down the number of asteroids in space on map generation. Speaking of the Shattered Planet, I really like the Prometheum Science Challenge. It's almost poetic, landing on all these planets to build factories with space as the intermediary, only for the final science to require a factory in space. I'm not sure how to feel about the people who collect Prometheum chunks on incredibly long belts and then make the science packs around Nalvis. As I've said, total mass has almost nothing to do with your actual speed, and so you can just build a million belts to collect billions of chunks with no downside so that you can skip needing to worry about biter egg spoilage entirely. On one hand, it would be pretty trivial to make Prometheum science only craftable in deep space, but on the other hand, would that be too restrictive? Balance is hard, but it does result in the mega belts being the far and away superior option for mass-produced Prometheum science, meaning that speed isn't much of a concern for the Prometheum ship, reducing overall complexity. It would be nice if Prometheum was used in more than one research, though. I wish I spent more time at the land talking to the developers, but I was busy playing Factorio. Seriously though, I had some good talks with some of them, and I learned to my disappointment that the floating brain jellyfish was originally intended to be around Aquilo, but was scrapped after they became worried it would make it too complicated. Apparently it was going to mess with your buildings like an Enderman from Minecraft, but alas. I had a good talk with Dan about the enemies, and he wanted my opinions on enemies in general. I told him I'd think about it, and I'm still thinking about it, so I might make an entire video dedicated to my thoughts on combat in Factorio. But I'll say in Space Age, combat was the only thing that I'd say that I was a little disappointed in. It didn't really change the existing dynamics, which I've always thought of as the weakest aspect of Factorio, and just added more. I actually really like the pentapods, and I'm looking forward to playing with them a little bit more seriously, but they're easy to bypass, especially if you did what I did. The demolishers are difficult to reconcile for me. They're really cool, but Kovrax pitched them as a sort of boss battle for Factorio, and I don't really think such a thing is possible in the Factorio framework, because obviously you're just gonna spam turrets. Then if that wasn't enough, just spam even more turrets. If you really wanted such a thing, you'd need to add more gamey elements, like them suddenly becoming immune to whatever burst of damage they just took and forcing you to switch to other damage types. That or being programmed to run away and try and regenerate, or being smart enough to go around turret nests, but all that stuff is kind of outside the corpus of Factorio. When they're that simple, I can't help but wish that there was a way to play without killing them, and the developers joked about that when I brought it up, that players ask for some massive enemy to kill, but the moment you give it to them suddenly they want to avoid killing it. Hey, that feeling that you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing is what makes it that much more fun. You've seen enough of my videos to know that. There was a menu simulation that they changed in the full release, because everyone at the LAN who saw it assumed that you could build around demolishers and not have them destroy everything. One of the developers mentioned trying to make it so that they wouldn't attack anything unpowered, but I'm not sure if that ever became more than a passing idea, because I would have loved to see it as used for power switches. That if you switched your base off while they were around, they wouldn't attack and instead go around it. Then you need to add something like radars they could output when an enemy was nearby, but funnily enough, the point is, is that I think that would be a lot more in line with the Factorio style than simply killing them. Anyway, I think that this topic is a little bit too broad for this video, so I'll just leave it at that. I also kind of wish that they could respawn to make a defense on Vulcanus a concern. Nothing major, it's just like little larvae crawling around that if you don't squish in a few hours, they'll grow up and reclaim territory. As for the planets, I've already mentioned that Gleba was changed quite a bit, but one change that I didn't necessarily agree with was the change to agricultural science. It used to take 40 nutrients instead of pentapod eggs, and I actually found that recipe much more interesting. Pentapod eggs always breed at maximum freshness and last 15 minutes instead of the 5 minutes of nutrients. Because of the 50% freshness nutrients from spoilage recipe, if you just carelessly grabbed nearly spoiled nutrients off the belt for your science, it would come out practically half spoiled already, and so routing your nutrients was much more important. Getting the freshest possible science was actually a much greater challenge. I don't hate using the pentapod eggs because it does add needing to worry about them spoiling or running out as an aspect of the process, but because Bioflux lasts two hours and is made from fruits that last one hour, it's very rare that you need to worry about them when crafting fresh science, when to me that felt like the whole point of spoilage, routing efficient setups to maximize freshness. Once again, I've got to mention how much I hate that heat pipes are locked to 15 degrees Celsius, but I guess I understand how much of a pain it would be to add that special interaction just for a quilo. Someone at the land claimed that heat pipes would melt ice, and yeah, you could just claim anything then and someone would believe you, but part of me wishes it were true. That's why everything requires concrete, at least. Aquila was definitely my favorite aesthetically, and the heating mechanic just makes all the builds look so unique. It's really cool, pun intended. 
Like I said, Space Age lacks the kind of scale that I really appreciate, but that's not that different from how I felt about Vanilla Factorio, so it'll really be up to the challenges I can think up, as well as the mods that appear to really give me the difficulty I crave. That's not a space exploration problem, that's a me problem, so don't think of it as criticism. It's just me saying that I'm really excited to see where Factorio mods are going from here. Some people are obviously going to compare this to space exploration, but honestly, they feel totally different. And I'm really excited to see where space exploration goes now that so many space age mechanics are in the game files. Apart from scope and difficulty, spec exploration differs from space in that all of the planets are randomized. And I think if that's tuned just right, that'll be just as interesting as the bespoke planets from space age, since you'll be able to pick and choose your planets and have everything feel a lot more serendipitous. I still stand by all my statements in that other retrospective, and I'll stand by them even stronger now that I'll help them stand apart from Space Age, but this video isn't about all that, so anyway, what else? I guess I have some minor gripes that I wish it were easier to get the rockets to request what you want even if you don't have a full stack of it. It's a little annoying that you need to manually select the item and then manually select the minimum amount if you're trying to build something you don't have a full rocket's worth of, such as legendary modules. It would be nice if there were a button you could click that would just be like, request exact amounts, and it would just yoink that amount set for every single request. I also don't like how being in remote view causes this big border to appear and move all your other GUI elements. I wish heating towers and reactors didn't constantly blink no fuel, because like, I get that you need to tell the player to fuel them, but them not being fueled is part of their normal function. It's probably too much effort, but I just wish it didn't yell at me that it was out of fuel and it's already a thousand degrees. I haven't played around much with train interrupts or parameterized blueprints, but I'm sure I'll think of something to do with them soon. Also, the circuit network changes are amazing. Speaking of the circuit network, I wish they'd just make the push button mod vanilla, but that's such a minor gripe, it's only being brought up here because I'm out of things to actually say. What else can I say? Uh, Space Age was fun, and they've somehow polished Factorio even further. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much, I give it a 9.4 out of 10. And I'm sure I'll think up a whole bunch more things I meant to say immediately after I finish this video, but okay bye.